In this video, we're going to be working on the definition of mathematical modeling, and we're going to practice making an image graph with the Desmos tool. This will be a requirement for your project, so I've been having a lot of questions to make a little review, and so this should be a short video. But we are going to talk about the definition of mathematical modeling, so let's get into that. Mathematical modeling is the process of using math to describe the physical world in order to gain insight into data and make predictions or judgments. By data, we mean information of some kind, which could be numbers, pictures, words. There's lots of different kinds of data that we can consider here. In the project we have, a lot of different things that we are learning how to use polynomials to model. For instance, we started off with the population of the region of Andalusia, and we broke this data down into the population of subregions. I found a really good data set, and I decided to try out this project so that each group would be modeling a different subregion. So in class, we produced a polynomial that models the population of our subregions. And later we will put all these polynomials together during class so that we can make a model that models the whole population of the whole region. And basically that will take polynomial addition, some of the first things that we studied in this unit. But we're also learning how to use polynomials to model architecture, art, nature, and other kinds of numerical data such as you know, visitors to a country, perhaps uh, people that arrive at an airport. So lots of different possibilities here what you can use for numerical data. But we did want to make uh, something visually interesting to look at. So that was our idea here. You can see this, uh, this monastery is giving us a good example of a parabola. And in the project, that was something that you guys all had to do. So one thing that's important to understand is that models do not have to be perfect, but they should be useful. And so models often need refinement in order to provide a better understanding. And sometimes our model can show us that something that we assumed was incorrect. So it's important to understand the weaknesses of a model. And this is something that we're going to look into with an example at the beginning here, using this example of an arch where many people might assume that this is a parabola. In fact, online, I found a few sources, including Wikipedia, that said that this was a parabolic, uh, parabolic arch. And the idea is that really, just because it looks like a curve doesn't mean it's a parabola. So, if we look at these three distinct different types of arches, there's lots of different kinds of arches that you could have in the world. But these arches specifically are a parabola, these hyperbolic arches, and these arches on the side are called catenary arches. They all have different formulas that if we graph them would produce these curves and they look kind of similar. If I was to just draw these on the board, some of you might say that this one was a parabola. Maybe these ones all the way at the end look a little different. So some people might suspect that maybe they weren't a parabola. But these ones over here look like there's something different about them. There's, there's some different quality, but they do look somewhat similar to a parabola. So we don't want to get these confused. And often people will use the word parabola to describe a catenary arches which you know parabolas can provide a good model and as we said in this last slide you know sometimes it can show us that an assumption was incorrect and that's something that we can do right now by applying this uh this idea of the equation that makes a parabola which is our quadratic functions that we've been working with so we're going to jump into desmos now we're going to see something that I wouldn't say that this would be an incorrect graph to put on your project, 
when we look at this, it looks like a great example. I think this arch, you know, might be a parabola at first until we investigate. You might have an instinct that says maybe it's not a parabola. So we're going to we're going to test this idea. So let's go in here. And after you have attached your image by clicking on this field and, you know, attaching the image that you saved. We'll take a look in this side and we'll have f of x equals x squared. And we can see that this is this red curve right here uh, with the vertex at the origin. So that's not going to do. We're going to have to test one of these. So let's test this one on the right here. And I think that we can use vertex form pretty easily. So if I didn't have the parentheses, the vertex form would definitely be not a uh, to be a standard form. This would not be vertex form in this case. So if you look at what happened, the vertex moved up four points. And so the standard form, again, the constant value ends up being our y-intercept. And in this case, the y-intercept also ended up being the vertex. So let's go add some parentheses into the places where they should be. We should put one here and one here. And now inside of the parentheses, I want to put a value that would help me put the vertex over here. Another thing that we should also see is that, you know, this would be a leading negative coefficient. Again, would this be, as I always ask students when we're graphing something, you know, would it make a happy face or a sad face? And in this case, we see this is open downwards. So we want a sad face parabola. So that would give me negative. Now, if I want to move this vertex, to this point over here, which is in between negative six and negative four, that would be negative five. So we might think I'm gonna put in minus five, but if you remember the way vertex form works, I have to put plus five and change the sign of this value. And we see that this went to the location we wanted it to be. So now we could try to align our graph using the coefficient and see if we can get this to match this curve. And we know that if we put a number like two or three, if we make this number bigger, if we put 34, if we put 345, we see as that number gets bigger, we have a very narrow graph. So if this number, the absolute value of this number, if it's bigger than one, the graph becomes more narrow. So let's use a number that's smaller than one. So let's try something like 0.8 and we see, okay, it's getting wider. Let's try 0.7. 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.3. And we see we're getting there, but if I go to 0 0.2, 0 point, uh, yeah, if I go to 0 0.3, we're outside, we're way outside. So we know that was too far. And if we try 0 0.4, it looks like this side lined up, but this other side doesn't really line up so well. So it looks like it's symmetric to a certain point up to here. Those two points are pretty close to the curve this part is not fitting and we can see that this part goes way off of the graph and this side seems like it's fitting a little better so again if we did 0.5 we see this is inside and that doesn't work so we know maybe we could try 0.4 0.41 0.42 0.43 0.44 0.45 and we see that it's not really going to fit and so one thing is that we're starting to suspect that this curve is not parabolic. And it turns out that it's not. This is actually a different kind of curve. The curve in this case would be called a Rankine curve. And it's not the kind that we're looking for in this project necessarily. However, we have a model and we know that we basically showed that the assumption that this was a parabola, that this arch in this building was a parabola was an incorrect assumption because we can't really get it to fit perfectly. We saw that our model was decent up to a certain point, but there was this discrepancy, this little distance in between. So we couldn't get it to match up perfectly. So again, that was an example that I think we wanna make sure that we're understanding that this doesn't perfectly describe this data right here. And in fact, we can use this uh, quadratic and the process we just went through to realize that no matter what number I put in here, it's actually not going to fit because 
it's just not the right shape. So just because something looks like a parabola doesn't mean that it is a parabola. And so, again, if I wanted to put something over here on this side, we could practice using vertex form just for the sake of it, because I wanted people to put more than one graph on the same image. So we see that this blue one has the same equation as the red one. And when I switch over to the blue field, we see that that becomes active. Well, if I want to move this vertex over here to this side, and I see this is at positive 5, then I would have to change this positive 5 into a negative 5. And now we see the blue graph moves over here to this side. And so if I wanted to push this vertex a little bit over here, then I would want to put negative 4.5. And we could see that this is almost lined up there. And again, it just doesn't fit right. It's not going to fit right because this is not a parabola. So no matter how much we change this coefficient, it's actually not going to fit. Um, again, this only has one turning point on this graph. And like we said, just because something is a curve doesn't mean a parabola will perfectly describe it. We see the parabola is kind of close and we could understand why it might be confused with it, but we see that it's actually not a perfect description of this curve. So this is an example of something that's not a parabola, even though we get an interesting model and we can have this conversation about why that doesn't work. So let's look at an example that might fit a little better. So this example here has a few curves and let's investigate whether or not they're parabolas. So we'll type in f of x and we'll press equals and then let's try vertex form. So I'll do x and then if I was to type in plus zero and then uh, square this, you could click on this keyboard and get your squared. And then now I could add some value if I wanted to move the vertex to the left or to the right. But in this case, uh, our vertex seems like it's nice being aligned as it is. So again, I don't have to really move the vertex to another place. I could move the graph over here, in which case I'd have to now pick a different vertex. So for this case, we could leave this vertex as it is. And now what I want to do is consider this idea that this is a negative, right? We're looking for something that's a negative value because we know that it's it's open downward. So if I want to move this vertex up, right? If I want to move this left or right, then I would be changing the number in the parentheses. Since I want to move up, we'll change the number outside of the parentheses. And so this value moves us to the point four, but we want right here. So it looks like these big squares are jumping by two. So we can try plus five and we can see, okay, that lines up pretty well. Again, the plus zero, we don't have to worry about for now. I'm just using that to represent that would be the X coordinate that we want for our vertex. Okay, because this vertex is at the point zero and five. So we can see why we have a zero here and a five there. So now let's play with this coefficient so that we can get it to uh, to fit. And again, if we use a number bigger than one, with the app, if we use a number with the absolute value bigger than one, then we end up getting graphs that are too narrow. So we know that it must be something less than uh, one. So let's pick a number like 0.9, and then 0.8, and then 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. And we see this is a much better fit than we had a second ago when we were looking at those other curves. We can see it must be somewhere in between 0.3 and 0.2. And so we know that if we increase this number, it's going to get more narrow. So we could try 0.25, we could try 0.24. We see 0.24 is pretty interesting. 0.23 fits pretty nicely. And so we could try 0.22. We could see if that fits better or not. It looks like 0.23 was a bigger, better fit. So, you know, that's not a bad example. I think this would be an example of one graph being on here. But as I said, we want to have more than one parabola on our graphs. In some cases, we want four parabolas to be on the graph. 
So one way I could make work faster would be just copy and paste one of these. Paste it here. Get rid of that extra f of x. And now I know that all I have to do is move my parabola to a different location, and then we'll just adjust as we need to. So let's try to move this to 5.5, um, because that's this point right here. This would be 5.5 on the graph. Well, again, this vertex is an x-coordinate of 0 and a y-coordinate of 5.5. But we see that the green line isn't matching up perfectly anymore. So let's use this coefficient. We're going to have to make it a little smaller to try to fit that. And in this case, we see that this green line now, when I change it to point 0.2, it fits pretty well. And I like that fit good enough for the, the purposes of this video. So far, we have two different parabolas on this graph. So now we can try to put another two if we wanted to right here. Just to show you how long this could take. Not very long at all, because all we're doing is just a little copy and pasting. So I want to locate the coordinates at this point right here. It looks like that might be at about 1. So we're going to change this to say plus 1. And now we see that we have something pretty close. We could jump in and try to figure it out. It looks like that might have to be a little lower. So we can, again, adjust this number, 0. 0.9. We could try 0. 0.95. We could try 0. 0.94, whatever makes us feel good. All right, that looks like it. it it fits well on the picture. So now let's use this value to adjust the curve to make it narrow enough to fit this inside pattern of bricks and this arch. So if I want to make it more narrow, again, I need to increase this value. So we'll, we'll go up and I'm just trying 5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And we can see that maybe even negative 1 is getting there, so we could try negative one, and then we could try ne negative 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.3. And we'll see that's actually not very bad at all. And it looks like our vertex is shifted over just a little bit. So I could maybe, if I wanted to move this vertex just to the left, just a little bit, what would I have to do? Would I have to change this into a negative? Or would I leave a positive number? And if you think about it, this is the negative side. So I need to put a positive number here. So we could try positive 0.1. And we can see that our parabola is now a little bit off still. So let's try, let's try 0.05. And we see that fits pretty well. So let's try another one. Right now we have three different graphs on this one image. Again, you can mess with these values to give you different dots. If you wanted dots, you could change the color. You could change the width of the line by clicking this value and I'm adjusting it. So if I wanted to change that to 5.5, it makes so much um, thicker value so that you can see it jump off the page. So that's up to you. I think that's one of your aesthetic choices of your presentation. If you want all of these graphs to be the same, it might be confusing which one is which. So like I said, if I do 5.5, I think it's helpful to actually have the colors. We can see the green doesn't really show up that great in this case. So we could try red and see what that does. Um, I think this value might make it more or less transparent. So we can try to make a, a value of one. Let's see what that does. I think if we change this to 0.5, you see it makes it a little more transparent. So uh, 0.5 might not be a good choice. So if we pick one, we see it's a little darker. We had this green value. Again, you could pick dots if you wanted. You could pick these. We could try just a black line, but um, you know, a color that would stand out would be best. And we also want to distinguish between these two different graphs so we could tell which one is which. So I think, you know, in this case, the green it was okay. The red we might be able to work with. Maybe we can make the line a little thicker and see if that helps us out. Okay. Or we could choose to not have a dashed line at all. That's another thing we can do. 
So all those options are up to you for the aesthetics of your presentation. Then this line, we have it looking okay. Looks like the blue actually stands out. So like I said, if you hover over here, you can change the thickness of the line. We can try 5.5 again. And we see we have a pretty nice solid line. Again, we can make a dotted line if we want. We can do a dashed line. It's up to you what you want to have. If you want to have the dashes or if you want to have the dots. It's up to you. Okay. I think we could try one more. And we could try to get a parabola that fits the top of this one. And so we can see how easy it would be to actually have four parabolas on one graph. So I'm going to copy and paste this into this new field. And now we see that I want to move this point. I want to move the vertex of this parabola up a little farther. And so it looks like that. This point is like... you have to zoom in to see it. And so that's one thing you want to realize is that this is 1.5. So this must be 1.4, 1.3, 1.2, 1.1, and then one, right? So these are going up by increments of 1.1. If you mess around with the values, you'll be able to figure out where you are and just continue to move the numbers until they fit right. And if you're having trouble, that would be something to bring to me. But I think if you, if you mess around with the numbers for long enough and keep increasing, decreasing, you'll find the right spot. So like we said, this is 1.0 and this would be 1.1. And so let's try 1.2. Like, like I said, we got this point in the right spot. And so let's adjust the coefficient so that we can get it to fit. So now we know we want to make it wider. So we could try 1.2, we could try 1.1, we could try negative one, and we see that's not really wide enough, so we're gonna have to go below one to 0.9. And that doesn't look like it's terrible at all, but we could try 0.8 and see that that is a little bit too wide. 0.9 was a better fit than that. But we do see that it's missing this part up here. And so maybe we want something somewhere in between there. Maybe we could try 0.85. Try 0 0.84, 0 0.83, 0 0.2, 0 0.81. And we see that we're losing some of the end behavior that we want to have here. So that's pretty good. So this tells me that maybe we're just a little bit too low on the vertex. And if we push up the vertex, maybe we can get a better. Okay, so again, we want to do this. If I was to move the image around, to try to get that to match, then all of my other work would be lost. And so this is, I think, what we learned in trying to manage all these graphs together on the same place. We have this idea that we need to use vertex forms so that we don't just move the graph to fit with one and lose all the other alignments. So this alignment looks pretty good for having four uh, parabolas. Again, it looks like we're missing that little part. So, you know, it's up to you if you want to try to be a perfectionist. Um, we can describe some of that behavior here. Try 0.89. We try 0.9. See how that works. And it looks like toward the end, that's not a bad job. We could try to move the vertex up a little more and see how that affects it. Right, and so, you know, we're getting something that's not a terrible fit at all, okay? That looks to describe most of the behavior, it goes outside a little bit of the bricks. And so, um, for the purposes of this video, if I was you, I might, you know, worry about the details a little more, but it does look pretty good. So, I think now the problem is really choosing the best angle taking the time to have the right amount of a uh, picture and scale so that you can see the numbers on the graph that we need here. In this case, we're looking for like five. And so we wanna zoom in to the right amount. So just be patient, try to figure out a way to get everything that we need on the graph. And then once you feel like you found the right angle that you want, um, this might be good enough right now, like this. 
I could use this one. So then we take a snip, right? Take a screen snip of this. I could go to a snipping tool and I could grab a snip of this image. Then I could copy this. And if I jumped into my presentation, we could make a new slide. This is one part of the process that I think you guys have to manage on your own. That's how are you going to convey this information to us? I think it would be a little lazy if we just took a snip of the whole screen and got all of this other information. I think we could do a better job than that. So maybe, you know, one thing you might be tempted to do would be to take a snip of all these functions over here on the side. It's not a terrible idea. We could paste it over here and try to find the right um, right size so that it actually fits and doesn't block our image. But I also think if we had some care about it, we could maybe even get them to be like more of a title so that this image, like as you see as this slide, when I present it, how's it look? It doesn't really have any pop it doesn't it doesn't center we're looking back and forth so you know it's not terrible but we probably could do better so you know one thing i was considering is how we could go here maybe we could take a snip of just this field right here and then we could copy that I pasted just that one part over here. We could have some labels to go along with our image. And instead of eating up this space on the side here, we could let the picture kind of dominate more of the slide. And we could censor it. And now we can try to add the rest of our equations that we need. So as I said, you know, those are personal style choices. I think that's up to you, but I'm just gonna, you know, kind of finish the process. I mean, I said you could continue to get your equations, get the color to match next to them. So we can copy that and paste it into our slide. And then that's up to you to decide how you wanna lay it out. I think everybody's going to have their own choices. And then, you know, of course, look at it. And if you don't like the way it looks, then just change it so that you have something that looks better. I tend to want the picture to take up as much space as possible. In this case, it's not doing terrible. But we also have this orange and black equation to go put in there. So let's take a look at how we could maybe make a little style choice. You know, presenting mathematical information is part of math. You know, we like to think of math as a language in this class and not just a set of rules. And we want this to be able to be seen. So, you know, consider where would be the best place to put it. You know, is everyone going to be able to see it if I put it in the bottom corners? Maybe not. Maybe that's not the best place to put it. So maybe if I put it here, is it going to fit? Is it going to take away from some of the picture? Um, Again, that's up to you, how you want to make it look. But, you know, I'm expecting you guys to take some care. So like I said, this is one way to do it. There's probably a lot of other ways to get this information onto the slide. But this is one possibility. I think Everyone's going to have their own way of doing this information, showing it to us. Again, this is one possibility. We could go look at the slide and say, okay, how does this look? And we could realize, hmm, like, it doesn't really look the way we'd like it to look. So you might change it if that's not what you want. In this case, it's, it's decent. We have good information that's conveyed. But the layout, it just feels a little sloppy, and it doesn't feel like it's really... Um, doing justice to the picture. So, you know, could find another way to lay it all out so that we're not eating into the space of the picture. 
the other idea that you might have is to make things really small. And so if we, if we squeeze everything together, I think that's a bad idea too, because that's going to make it so that we have a problem of things being visible when we're actually presenting. And that can be a weakness. And for instance, if we take a look here, oh, that's off the ground floor. Try to move it and you can see how it looks. So it's not so, uh, not so simple. So I don't think we should just do that where we're just resizing these things. So we could put them on one side. You could try to pick an area that you want to have them on. Like I said, it's up to you how you want to lay it out. I think the dimensions of the picture also have something to do with what you choose. So if I wanted to send this image, of course, you could send it to the back. But it's behind everything. And then if I wanted to put that there, you might be able to find a way to type these in another font, which is what I was thinking would be maybe ideal would be for you to just make a new text box and place it here and then put the information that you want. Type these equations out, just make them look right. Choose a font that you guys want to use. You can label it in many different ways. Um, you know, I think if you put a little bit of care into what you're doing and you're deciding, um, you know, it's going to show on the presentation when it comes and it won't look like it was hastily made and that's some you know, you're doing some good work here, hopefully, with your graphs. So you want to make sure that we can see everything we need to see while we're presenting. And we want it to not distract from the image. Like parabolas have a nice symmetry to them. So we probably want to keep that. So it's up to you. Again, the, the LFD is, has a, a decent size, but you want to consider maybe stopping by office hours and, and double checking how your presentation is going to look from the actual size of the screen. I think a lot of people might be doing this last minute and then we'll end up finding out on the day of how their presentation looks on their LFD. So come by during office hours, see if you can figure out what, uh, what adjustments might need to be made. So I hope this helps some of you guys understand how to put more than one parabola on a slide. We've been studying these equations, so we should be somewhat used to vertex form by now. And as I said, just copy and pasting the whole Desmo screenshot. It would be better than having a, a blank slide, but I think you could do better than that. I think, you know, having a little text box, adding these functions in there and then labeling them some kind of way you could maybe change the text to be a certain color maybe you could underline it with the color maybe you could put them each in a box but there's you know there's more than one ways to do this problem i think if we were to go here to f of x equals you might get stuck at the step where you have to write a superscript in which case you know one thing you should do is just go to Google in that case and ask the question, type it in, like, how do I write superscript? And you might learn that you have to press control and period at the same time to get this value up there. And then if you click, you should be able to recover. Or if you press control period again, it should undo the superscript. So now I could type plus 5.5. .5. And as I said, when I attended the precision here, like is this minus sign big enough? Can everybody see it? So you can, you know, mess with the font, make it bold, increase the font size, whatever it is that you want to do. And then you might even be able to underline it with a certain color. Maybe you could, if you try to change the text, that might sound interesting, but again, on the white background, are we gonna be able to see that? So if you play with the background color, all the different ideas that you can have, you can find a way to you know, present this information in a way that, that you like, but <clears throat> maybe the underline wasn't the way to go. Maybe what you wanna do is 
you know, put it in a box of some color. So you could experiment with some of the possibilities, some of the things in format, some of the ideas and border color. You might be able to say, okay, let's change this border color to orange. And then you see, okay, we have borders for our text box. And then now you might be able to, uh, to see that hopefully. So that's just one idea. Again, we could look at it on presentation mode to see how it looks. You know, maybe we could increase the weight of these lines so that they look a little thicker. But, you know, at any rate, as long as you indicate what's going on in your graph, um, we should be able to follow you. So I hope this helped. Again, the idea that I used in my sample presentation was usually to also have the name of the location on the slide. So as I said, you know, it's possible to just take a quick snip of these things. But if you find the name of these actual places and tell us the location, give us enough information so that we, we feel like we know what's happening here. And I think um, the slide will look better. So here's an outcome that I tried to put together. So here's an outcome that I tried to put together. One idea that I had was trying to make the picture bigger, adding the equations in the top of the slide, making sure that they were all labeled in a text box with the same color as the equation, and then also labeling the picture. I like to keep the pictures as big as possible. And you might see that it might be a little hard to read some of these things here. So again, you can lay those out maybe in a different font if I wanted to keep messing around with this, but it's up to you. This is your, uh, your presentation. And so you have to think about how to make these equations and everything look correct. Again, to make uh, the superscripts happen. It looks like right here, I didn't type that. So if you press control and then period, you should be able to type the superscripts and then you can put a two there and they'll be able to show up together. So as I said, we have the, uh, the name of this place. It was uh, a winery, I believe. And then this is in Catalonia. So this is not somewhere in Andalusia. This is in the northern part of Spain. And we have all the information we need. And we also kept the slide balanced and symmetric. The picture is the main focus. And the information for the graphs is up here so that we know what we're looking at. And it's up to you how to lay these things out, the choice of font, all those kinds of things. I'll leave those choices up to you. I think you want to pick something that makes it legible so that everybody can actually clearly communicate what you're trying to say. And for instance, like I said, you have to be creative a little bit in your choice of using the image. I could have tried to put, you know, maybe the titles here in this space. Um, I kind of like to hide things in blank spaces of image where it's not gonna to be too distracting, but also you can point it out and still let the picture take over. So I tend to use uh, those empty spaces in the image when I'm designing a presentation, but it's up to your personal style. Um, I think you know each person was responsible for designing their own slide. If you guys come up with a, an idea as a group of the kind of theme a font that everybody wants to use, then you know please try to cooperate. But otherwise, you know, design the slide that you make uh, with your efforts and all the little adjustments that you need to make, those are up to you. So here we go. I wish you guys luck in this presentation. I think the graphing part isn't as bad. The hard part was really finding good images and trying to find good examples of parabolas, even though it might not be easy to locate them every time. So like we said with that last example, when we looked at this building, 
the idea was that we might not always actually get a parabola when we think we might. And this was one idea that basically showed us we still can get some work done. It might not be a perfect model, but at least in your presentation, you should point that out that, you know, you thought that this graph was going to be a parabola, but that it didn't work or that it didn't describe uh, the behavior perfectly. I think there's something valuable to learn there too. So, you know, talking about the experience would make this slide, I think, um, interesting, even if you had found something that didn't totally fit. We could talk about that at least. So do your best to find good examples of parabolas and good arches. I think vertex form is the easiest way to go. So again, if you change the sign of these values inside the parentheses, that's going to move our graph right or left. So when you have to put more than one on one slide, you know, just understand what happens when you move this number that's going to move the vertex to the location where it should be. I notice this is a positive 4.5. And in the blue equation, we have a negative 4.5 right here. So don't forget that idea of changing the sign so that you can get the X coordinate where it needs to be. One last thing that could help you would be you could create a point. If you, were, if it, you found it hard to see where something was in space, you can create a point. In this case, you can see we created this green point. And now, if you click and hold on this situation right here, this button, this icon, you can go to drag. And when you select drag, that basically lets you move the point around and you'll see these coordinates change. So let's say, for instance, that I wanted to know what the coordinate is of this point up here. We can see that when I let go, it'll show us what it is over here and then I can, you know, stop guessing maybe a little bit so that can help you do that. But otherwise, I think, you know, when we're working with the coefficients, that part, you kind of have to guess and check a little bit and try to get it to fit correctly. And if you see that it's not fitting correctly, then you should definitely be thinking whether or not um, it's possible. Because maybe it's impossible. And in that case, you shouldn't keep trying because that would be a waste of time, right? So as I said, um, good luck. Again, all you have to do to create a point is just go in here and type a uh, parentheses and then put zero comma zero. Close the parentheses and the point will be there and you might see that you cannot drag it. So if you hold down and click on the icon over here, you can select drag and now you'll be able to move the point around. So please uh, use some of these ideas that I gave you. Vertex form is definitely an easy way to be able to control and manipulate it. Again, this controls the X coordinate of the vertex. This controls the Y coordinate. This will let you change the bend. Again, if this is negative, it should be open downward. If we go the other way, it would be open upward. And don't forget that numbers smaller than one are going to give us a much wider parabola. And so if you need a number less than one, I mean, think of this as cents, right? 10 cents, what's less than 10 cents? Well, five cents or four cents or three cents or two cents or one cent. And you can see that the parabola goes out wide, but if you zoom out enough, you know, it looks like any other parabola would eventually. So that's what that coefficient does. So, you know, if you were to continue adding zeros, it might look like it's flat. But again, as I told you, if we zoom out far enough, we'll see that this looks parabolic, just like every other parabola we've drawn. So I wish you luck again, as I said, good luck designing your slides for this presentation and finding images. If you do need help, send me a message, ask me a question and, um, We'll try to take care of it. Uh, good luck.